tremendous this year, but Morgan's crew may have found the edge with his V6 powered Buick. Today, Shepard goes for three in a row in the Dixie Cup 200 from Darlington International Raceway. Your number one Auto Racing Network presents Auto Racing 86. you to Darlington International Raceway in South Carolina for today's NASCAR Grand National Late Model Sportsman Race, the Dixie Cup 200. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Bob Jenkins, along with Winston Cup driver and former Winston Cup champion, Benny Parsons, ready for some excitement today here on this track that's a little more than a mile in length, but with a great tradition and heritage. They date back to 1950 here at this racetrack. Morgan Shepard is on a roll. He's won the last two Grand National races. Can he make it three, Benny? Sure he can make it three, but he's got an uphill struggle today because he's starting fourth, and not only starting fourth, Tim Richmond on the pole is almost four miles an hour quicker than he is. It's an uphill struggle for Morgan Shepard today. Tim Richmond is driving the car that uh, Jeff Bodine usually drives in this division, but he did qualify well. I can't believe he's three and a half miles an hour faster than anyone else in the field. If he can just keep it together, it looks like victory is assured. But that is a problem because being that much faster is very difficult. You need the competition to drive around the racetrack really well. A great story here this weekend. Kenny Burks, who was involved in a very serious accident last weekend, is back. He's not only back, but he's qualified third fastest. Let's get more on that situation now as we go to our third member of the broadcast team for today's Dixie Cup 200. Here is Jack Aroot. Well, there's no question that it did look bad for Kenny Burks one week ago, but here he is in Darlington, South Carolina, qualified in the third position. Kenny, it seems as if when you crash, you do better when you come back. Yeah, uh, we're really happy where we qualified, and uh, hopefully we can just have a good finish. When you start the car this weekend, knowing farewell what you went through one week ago, do you think about that at all? Do you maybe stay out of the throttle a little bit, especially at the track too tough to tame? Well, this is a real hard track to stay out of trouble, and uh, I suppose uh, we will try to stay out, kind of ease back a little bit first half. Well, that's the story from Pitt Road. Kenny Burke starting right behind two superstars. Look for him to have a good finish here today. All right, we wish Kenny Burke's good luck, and the other 35 starters will be in today's Dixie Cup 200, which is being brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by Bush Beer, the beer with a taste as smooth as its name. And by Goodyear Eagles, you either have Goodyear Eagles or you need them. We'll be right back with the starting lineup for today's race in just a moment. Welcome back to Darlington International Raceway. The field is lined up on pit road. The command has not been given yet to start engines, but it will in just a few moments. 36 cars and drivers are set to go in today's 147 lap event. Here's the lineup on the pole number 15, Tim Richmond, qualifying at 157.298, a new track record. Outside of row number one will be Dale Earnhardt, qualifying at 153.747. In the second row, Kenny Burks in car 02, the Burks hauling Pontiac. Outside will be Morgan Shepard in car number seven, the Whitaker Racing Buick. 
Row number three has Daryl Waltrip in the Budweiser Colonial Bread Pontiac Car 17 and Dale Jarrett in the Nationwide Auto Parts Pontiac Car 32. Then in row number four, Brett Bodine in double zero, the Thomas Brothers Country Hambles. Outside will be Brad Teague in the Food Country USA Pontiac Car 75. In the fifth row, car number 22, the A.G. Dillard Pontiac driven by Rick Mast. Alongside, Davey Allison in the Miller American Buick Car 95. In the sixth row, Tommy Houston in car number six, the Southern Biscuit Flower Buick. Outside, L.D. Ottinger, the All-Pro Auto Parts Pontiac Car 2. In row number seven will be 11, Jack Ingram in the Skull Bandit Oldsmobile. Then Jimmy Hensley in the number 63 Flutes Cheap Metal Oldsmobile. Going to row number eight will be Larry Pearson in car number 21 and Randy LaJoy in 03. The ninth row has Rick Wilson in car number 69 and Joe Thurman in number four. In row number 10, Bosco Lowe in car 27 and Rodney Howard in 24. The 11th row will be Donnie Allison in 23 and Haskell Willingham in 90. In the next row will be Mike Monticelli in number 19 and Kenny Bouchard in number 10. Row 13 has Kyle Petty in car number 47 and Joe Harrison in 57. The 14th row, Mike Swaim in car 89 and Charlie Luck in 45. Row number 15, number 14, Ronnie Silver and number 60, Ed Barrier. Row number 16 has Jack Bland in car 07 and Larry Pollard in 98. Then in the 17th row will be John Linville in 62 and Denny Curley in 71. And in row number 18 will be Robert Ingram Jr., car number one, and Jimmy Lawson in his first super speedway race in car number 16. As you can see, the field has moved away and is in turns number three and four right now on the first of a couple warm-up laps. There is Brett Bodine in car number double zero. He qualified for the seventh starting position here this afternoon and quite honestly has some uh, proving to do because last week's performance at Bristol, Benny, was not all that impressive. No, as I remember correctly, it was a couple of spin outs. Uh, it was a bad day for Brett Bodine, but Dalton, South Carolina, if he brings victory home today, I'm sure this crew will, be, will forgive him for last week. And another driver who is doing so well this year on the NASCAR Grand National Division is starting right alongside Brett Bodine. In number 75, that is Brad T. I'm told that uh, up in Kingsport last this week, they've almost had a victory celebration because they feel like that Brad Teague was the first pure Grand National driver at Bristol last week. He finished third behind Morgan Shepard and Dale Earnhardt. And he has four out of five top ten finishes this year in this division with a seventh, a sixth, a seventh, and a third. On the pole in car number 15, the car normally assigned to Jeff Bodine is Tim Richmond, and he broke his own qualifying record here this weekend. His previous record was 155.7, and he has moved that up to 157.2. And the reason that uh, Jeff Bodine is not driving that car today, he did slightly injure himself in that accident last weekend at Bristol, and they simply don't want to take the chance of him getting injured and missing the Winston Cup races. Well, that's right, because he is the only one right now that really, truly has a chance to win one million dollars, the Winston Million. He won the Daytona 500. If he can win the Winston 500 and the World 600 or the Southern 500, one million dollar bonus. Green flag. And the green flag is out. The Dixie Cup 200 late model sportsman Grand National race is underway from Darlington. Darrell Walter didn't waste any time getting by Kenny Burks. Walter is now moved up into third position right behind Dale Earnhardt and Tim Richmond who has jumped out into the lead and now stretches it out just a little bit. But here comes Dale Earnhardt closing the gap in turns number three and four. Earnhardt moving to the inside. They touch in the first lap. That's an indication of things to come this afternoon. And we have an accident here on the main straightaway. And it's Kenny Burks in car number double, double rather zero two involved in this accident. The car is stopped along the outside wall. And this is the same area of the racetrack in which Kenny Burks was involved in an accident last weekend at Bristol. Well, but this time he was the sitter. <laughs> now they're racing back to the flag. This is Earnhardt in Richmond trying to race back. Now they've slowed down now. They apparently are slowed down. And Richmond will have the lead as they come around. But an accident here on the very first lap. Kenny Burks 
has uh, moved away now. It appears as if uh, they are coming down for the first lap under yellow, but they very wisely are using their heads, slowing down, knowing that the accident is on the main straightaway. Exactly. We'll replay this accident and try to determine what happened. Benny? Kenny Burke just simply got too high coming off turn four, hit the outside retaining wall. That's called a Darlington strike. He loses control when he tries to correct. That's what happened. Hits the wall head on. And I, how in the world he was fortunate enough to keep the look. It looks like the rear tires are spinning forward. Like he may have the accelerator on to try to keep the car into the outside retaining wall so they don't go back in front of the other cars. And a great job of driving by the other drivers and keeping away from that car. Back with more from the Dixie Cup 200 right after this. The green flag is back on at the Dixie Cup 200 at Darlington International Raceway. Here they come to complete lap number five. The leader is Tim Richmond. Dale Earnhardt running in second position. Then Daryl Waltrip is third. And Morgan Shepard is in fourth spot. Let's go to the pit area and get an update on the Kenny Burke situation. Here's Jack Aroon. Well, they brought Kenny Burke's behind the wall. He's actually right in front of me as we talk right here. And let's take a look at Kenny Burke's damage. You can see it on the front of the automobile. And gentlemen, the thing that I noticed most importantly is it could have been a bunch of inexperience at Darlington that caused this crash. On the start, Daryl Waltrip just intimidated his way by Kenny Burks, and it looked like Kenny lost all of his composure, and it ended up against the concrete and underneath the start-finish line. Well, Benny, this is one of the racetracks in which they do very highly emphasize a rookie orientation program, and uh, perhaps it was an experience that led to that first lap crash. Experience means so much at Darlington, more so than any other racetrack on the circuit. As a matter of fact, they show a film. But look at Earnhardt trying to get uns. He does. Nice he matches pitching up in three and four. So Dale Earnhardt is going to lead lap number seven. Richmond now second. Morgan Shepard has moved into third position. Meanwhile, Randy LaJoy in car number 07 did spin, but he kept it under control, and there'll be no yellow. Great job by LaJoy. Spun going in turn three. Was able to get the car back under control and continue on. And look. Richmond going back by Earnhardt one more time. Morgan Shepard. Oh, wow. Again, some bumping and banging going on out there. You would think we were back in Bristol on a short track, but this is a super speedway, and still a lot of paint being traded out there. They come down the main straightaway. You're putting on the inside. And Shepard looking for second spot. He has it from Dale Earnhardt. Shepard is second in that B6. Now Earnhardt still will not let him get that position, but finally backs off and allows Morgan into that second spot firmly. And here goes Daryl Walter trying to get by Earnhardt going in turn three. Dale Earnhardt falling to back abreast in. already to abreast in turn three. And folks, that is hard to do 100 miles into the race. These two fellas did it on the 10th lap of the race. Darlington is not a two groove racetrack, is it, Benny? It certainly is, not particularly in turn three where these two fellas went in side by side. Watching Brett Bodine now, who is running right behind Daryl Waltrip, also doing a nice job here in the early stages of this race. There is Taylor Earnhardt in car number eight, who is in third spot. The lead now back in the hands of Tim Richmond. There is Tommy Houston. He was in the pits on the caution flag, and they taped up the windshield of that car. And Jack Aroon has an update from the pits. Benny, this is about the size of the original hole on Tommy Houston's car. You talked about the tape that they've used. Here it is. The windshield right in front of his field of vision is coming apart as he drives down the track. So we've got problems for Tommy Houston. We have another crash, and it's Charlie Luck into the wall hard on the main straightaway, and we have fire coming out from under that car. Obviously, Charlie is not in control of that car. It looks as if he may get it stopped before making contact with the outside wall, but a hard shot for Charlie. Luck in car number 45 and once again coming off of turn number four that's where the incident occurred Charlie luckily is out of the car and signifying that he's okay there the his tire went by him at about hundred miles per hour we saw the, the black flash Wow hard hard blow by Charlie luck but he felt that fire and got out of the car very quickly there's a fire truck the NASCAR fire truck now Charlie First of all, they're gonna make sure he's okay yeah he may be a little shaken up here he's uh we have a replay of what happened. 
up in turn number four. Here he is, losing control, coming off of the fourth corner. There we see his tire. It's the left front tire has come off the automobile, which made him lose control. He hit the outside retaining wall, and when he did that, he bent the steering suspension up so that he had no control whatsoever. The car on his own accord went down, hit the inside retaining wall, and as we saw, continued on down into turn one, where he's sitting right now. Sam Hart is the uh, crew chief on this car of Charlie Luck, former uh, champion of this division. And it's going to be a while before we can go back under green because they're going to have to get this battered car off of the racetrack. So we'll resume our coverage from Darlington in a moment. In addition to the Trans South 500 tomorrow and the hockey game tonight, we have the Formula One race from Spain coming up tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock Eastern time here on ESPN. Now, Ayrton Senna has qualified for the pole at over 115 miles an hour. Nelson Piquet will be starting alongside. Jackie Stewart and Larry Nuber will all have all the action for you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, the Spanish Grand Prix here on ESPN. We're at Darlington, South Carolina this afternoon for a Grand National race, and we have seen two accidents in the first 13 laps of this event. Kenny Burks losing control in corner number four early, and the most recent accident for Charlie Luck, who had an encounter with the inside retaining wall also off of corner number four. And the fourth corner, Benny, seems to be one of the areas in this racetrack that gives the drivers the most problems. It's going to give the drivers the most problems early on in the event. Once the race gets settled down and the, and the leaders start catching some of the slower cars and lapping them, I, th I really think the turn two is going to be a problem because high on outside of turn two, it's very slick. Jack Arood has something for us from the pits. Jack? Yeah, Benny, they've removed Charlie Luck to the infield medical center for the mandatory checkup, but one of the things that we wanted to bring the people up to date on is the fact that, as you know, Charlie was running with telemetry, medical telemetry, hooked up to his body. He's been working with Appalachian State University, the human performance lab, trying to develop a profile of what a race driver goes through as an athlete. So he had the EKG and the respiration and everything all monitored inside the car. And you can be sure come Monday morning when they look through that telemetry, they're really going to have their hands full. Well, now, what about that, Benny? You've been in accidents before. Does your heart beat a little faster when you know you're going to hit the wall? I guarantee, you know, there's Tommy Houston back in trying to get, they're trying to put something clear. That must be plexiglass or something they're putting over the hole and taping on. But uh, when we have an accident at a major speedway such as Darlington, uh, Talladega, Daytona, they do take you to the hospital, and the first thing they check is the blood pressure. And it's always much higher than it ought to be. Luckily, uh, Charlie Luck doesn't appear to be seriously injured, although he has been taken to the hospital just for a routine examination. We're still under caution here at Darlington with 15 out of 147 laps completed. The Dixie Cup 200, back after this. at Darlington where the cleanup continues for the Charlie Luck accident. However, we have been given the indication that next time around we will resume with the race and go green again. 16 laps have been completed. The leader at this moment is Tim Richmond with Morgan Shepard second, Dale Earnhardt third, and Daryl Waltrip. Brett Bodine running in fifth position. Sixth is Brad Teague. Seventh is Dale Jarrett. Eighth is Rick Mass. Ninth is L.D. Ottinger. And tenth is Jack Ingram. I can't figure out where did Richmond's three and a half mile per hour advantage go to because I certainly can't see it. There's, we've seen no indication of it so far. As a matter of fact, Earnhardt has looked very strong here, and so has Morgan Shepard, who, as you know, has won the last two Grand National races, looking for the third consecutive victory here this afternoon. The pace car in the field in turn number four now, and the pace car has dropped down to the apron of the racetrack. Pace begins to quicken now as Tim Richmond begins to accelerate coming out of corner number four. Harold Kinder looking them over and displaying the green flag. We are back to racing. Look Teague. at Brad Teague way down to the inside of the racetrack trying to gain a spot. Brad Teague anticipated the green flag and that's a no-no. I don't know if what NASCAR is going to say about it, but normally they don't like it. Well, nevertheless, Brad Teague has moved into fifth spot now going around Brett Bodine there on that restart. Brad Teague in fifth. There is Shepard and Earnhardt following Tim Richmond. 
you wonder, people wonder why that anyone can't start when they want to. It's up to the leader, the leader of the race to start the event. The pace here, well above 150 miles an hour, 157.289 was the bull sitting speed by Tim Richmond. And although race speeds are a little bit slower, they're still well above 150. Off of corner number four, rather corner number two, and down the back stretch. Earnhardt is getting through the turns extremely well, but he's having problems going down the straightaway. He can't run down the straightaway with some of these other cars. There we see him alongside Morgan Shepard. Turn four. Morgan just relinquishes his spot. Says, go ahead, Dale. You can have it. Earnhardt now into second position, trying to close the gap between himself and Tim Richmond. Tim Richmond is in his first Grand National race so far this year. His best Winston Cup finish of the year is a seventh at Atlanta. Tim Richmond filling in for Jeff Bodine in the number 15 Levi Garrett Pontiac. Now look at the heat being put on by Dale Earnhardt. Here they come off of the fourth quarter again. He is right on the back bumper of Tim Richmond. He wants the lead. Earnhardt just isn't content to sit back and ride in second spot. If he has a horse that will go to the front, he's going to take it there. This is always an outstanding, competitive race. I remember two years ago, it was one of the best races that I have ever seen in my life. And last year's race was a good one also. You'll recall that Jack Ingram was the winner of that race after some relief by Gary Gant. Jack didn't walk by Harry Gant down in the Winston Cup garage area about an hour ago and said, my back sure feels like it's going to hurt today, Harry. 21 laps completed. It's Tim Richmond and Dale Earnhardt battling for the top spot here in this Grand National race. Brett Bodine and Dale Jarrett are also nose to tail out there on the racetrack. And last lap, Brett Bodine in double zero tried to get alongside 75 Brad T, the car directly in front of him. As we, there we're back to the lead. That's Earnhardt has taken the lead from Tim Richmond. Earnhardt now has the lead. You are so right. That car handling well in the turns. That has been the area of the track that Dale Earnhardt has looked the strongest. He passed for second position in turns three and four, and now he has taken the lead from Tim Richmond in turns three and four. There he is down the back stretch, Dale Earnhardt. The way he was running just a moment ago, I was afraid if Earnhardt got in front that he would simply drive away from the field. But I don't think Richmond's going to let him go anywhere. Well, he's opened up maybe two car lengths between himself and Tim Richmond of 10 not letting him get away. The interval back to third position is now opened up to seven or eight car lengths as Morgan Shepard continues to run in that third spot. But the race right now for the lead, Dale Earnhardt and number 15, Tim Richmond. Richmond right on the bumper of the good wrench car driven by Earnhardt. Earnhardt is getting through turns three and four so well. He puts about two or three car lengths on Tim Richmond every time they go in turn three. Of course, Benny will be behind the wheel tomorrow when we bring you live the Trans South 500 from this very racetrack and Benny, you qualify third fastest. Are your uh, hopes up for tomorrow's race? Yes, they are, Bob. I, I really feel like tomorrow's going to be a good day. But I tell you, there's two fellows we're looking at the screen right now. Oh, Dale. and we have smoke coming from Morgan Shepard's car, and he's spinning in turn number four. Turn number three, that is. Morgan Shepard. It appeared, Benny, as though something went wrong with that car. Maybe an engine, but I think he got some moisture on the wheels of that car that caused him to lose it to a half spin, crush the wall in turn number three, and now the car is on the inside of the racetrack. It looks like that's exactly what happened, that he did have, did have an engine problem or, you know, a water problem or some kind of liquid got under the wheels of the automobile, and he was able to control it. Darrell Walter was the guy that really did the job because if we can see in replay, I don't know if we have it or not, but Darrell Walter was right behind Morgan Shepard and was able to avoid the moisture and was able to keep the car from spinning and was able to avoid Morgan Shepard while he was sliding around there. So the streak in Grand National Racing for Morgan Shepard has definitely ended. Morgan Shepard will not win today's race. Here it is again, Benny. There he already has the car sideways. He backs in the outside retaining wall. And Darrell Walter gets by. Now, Dale Jarrett, we can't see it in the back, but Dale Jarrett does spin. 
Jared appeared to uh, see the trouble in front of him and got on the brakes and did a half spin to the inside of the track, but I believe that Dale continued on and will uh, not have to drop out of this race. But as for Morgan Shepard, the afternoon is over. He's not out of the car, Benny, but I think he's okay. You can see him removing his helmet. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, looks like the medical people are working or trying to help him get out of the car right now. Yeah, he's moving around. Yeah. Morgan's getting out of the car. Here he comes. And another replay of it. There we see Dale Jarrett. The other cars slowed down. What happened? The cars in front of Dale Jarrett slowed down so abruptly that he had to drive off the racetrack on the flat to miss those two cars. There it is wasn't Dale. he got in the oil or, or spun. He just, they slowed down. He had nowhere to go. As a matter of fact, I think it's a pretty good job avoiding those other two cars. Absolutely. Dale Jarrett, who started this race in sixth spot in the Nationwide Auto Parts Pontiac and was running in 10th position when that incident occurred. Now, there is... Uh, the number 21 car of Larry Pearson going back out onto the racetrack after having made a pit stop. And, you know, the amazing thing about in his pits, the fellow who's calling the shots today is Jake Elder, uh, the crew chief on Morgan Shepard's Winston Cup car. I think they call there's him Jake right there. Uh, <laughs> they call him the suitcase, and he's uh, packed it and gone to this Grand <laughs> National crew for this race. He moved on down the road today, and uh, he's been... He was a crew chief for David Pearson many, many years ago. As a matter of fact, in 1968-69, when Pearson won the Winston Cup Championship, J.C. Elder was the crew chief. There's Jack Aroot with him. Jack, get in there and talk to those fellas. These are two guys that you got to talk to when you see them together. Jake, what are you doing out here? <laughs> uh, nothing. I'm just watching them. Now, nah, don't start. David, I heard you talking to him, and he's telling you already chose the wrong springs today. Now, what's the story? No, not really. He didn't say that. We, uh... He just said we had too much sport. These cars didn't need that much. Of course, uh, the car was tight, and of course, uh, Jake went to holler and take way down. And one holler changed tire, the one that knocked the spoiler down. So uh, uh, we just had a good time with him. David, you did have a close call, though. It was good that the caution did come out because Larry's hood was coming apart. Well, it, no, it was just a back boat come out of it, which it was going to run all day that way. And it wouldn't, uh, in fact, it might would have helped a little bit, give him a little more wind dynamics, but uh, he was hollering it was loose, so we went ahead and tried to wrap it down. What about David Pearson's driving career? Is it over? Are you finally retired, Dave? No, I don't think so. <laughs> of course, uh, everybody thinks I have because I haven't been running. And uh, I don't know. I, in fact, though, uh, of course, I've been thinking about it here lately. But uh, really, I, I, I believe a driver would never think about how old he is or uh, if he would ever retire if it wasn't for the sports riders. Every time they walk up to you, they say, are you going to retire or are you quitting or how much longer are you going to drive? Then it gets on the driver's mind. Well, am I really too old? Is that what it is? But if it wasn't for them, you never think about it and run for years and years. Well, the thing that I understand, Jake, that you need to know is this guy bought himself a helicopter. Do you think you can help him set that up? Uh, I was missing a helicopter. <laughs> That's it for pit road, guys. Well, at least one vote from the broadcast booth uh, for David Pearson not to retire. He's not too old, Benny. Hey, now, come on. I, I'm all for it because he's tough competition. <laughs> Well, David uh, won't be in the race tomorrow, but uh, Benny will. But a lot of uh, good competition for you uh, tomorrow uh, in the race, uh, not the least of which Jeff Bodine will be on the pole and Tim Richmond will be alongside the Hendrix cars performing well here this weekend in Winston Cup. You know, we were looking over the starting lineup just a few moments ago, Bob, and, and you start down the list of the starting lineup tomorrow and you say, well, this guy has an opportunity to win and that guy has an opportunity to win. And you know something, all of a sudden, you've talked about 25 people that really and truly have an opportunity to win the race. Uh, who's going to win? I have no idea. I just hope we can keep the streak going that 12 different winners in 12 races, and I hope I'm the 12th guy. Green flag is back out. Racing resumes on the 29th lap. This is a 147-lap race, 200 miles here in Darlington. And Dale Earnhardt is the leader. And a car up against the wall in corner number one is Dale Jarrett. He doesn't spin, but does scrape along the wall, and everybody behind him has to hit the brakes. I don't believe we're going to see a caution come out, but Jarrett definitely in trouble. I would, I would suspect that when he got down to the, there we see a replay, there he is on the outside. It looks to me like the right front tire is flat, and I would say, I would speculate that when he got down on the apron a few moments ago, one of the small pebbles, a stone, punctured the right front tire, and he should have come into pits and changed it, but he didn't realize it was flat. Well, there we see a good shot of Dale Jarrett. He's on the inside of the racetrack now, headed for his pits here along the main straightaway. They'll be 
taking a look at that car to see if indeed he does need a tire change. And Jack is making his way to that area. Here is Jack. You can see the right side sheet metal is all battered and torn as the crew from the Nationwide team goes to work. They're going to exchange right side Goodyear tires, put them on, and Benny, as you said, the right front did go down, and they're having a great deal of difficulty peeling the sheet metal away as he works up on the jack. They've loaded the car up with fuel. Dale Jarrett looks none the worse for wear strapped inside the car. Just a couple of more moments with the jackhammer trying to knock away that sheet metal on the right front. That's where the most damage is done. And then he'll be back, but he'll be several laps down. Well, there's a lot of talk about Dale Jarrett possibly taking over the Winston Cup ride that now belongs to Ron Bouchard. But uh, he is uncertain at this time whether or not he will be stepping into that car. Now, we go back to the racetrack and pick up the action. It's still a two-car race here between Dale Earnhardt and Tim Richmond. Now, Brad Teague also moving up here, having passed Darrell Waltrip. On the restart, Brad Teague did the same thing he did just a moment ago. He anticipated the start of the race, of the restart a little bit better than Waltrip, was able to pass it for third spot. There's a slow car in the way. I'm, the 57 car, Peterson, has gotten between Darrell Waltrip and Brad Teague, and that's going to hurt Darrell severely. Well, the slower car does move high on the racetrack in a nice gesture, allowing the faster car of Waltrip to go underneath. There is Waltrip down the back stretch. One of the cars we've been watching making a nice move is Rick Wilson in car number 69. We'll try to show you him in a few minutes. He has moved from 17 starting position to 7. I said Peterson. That was Harrison in the 57 car, the slower car that was between Brad Teague and Darrell Waltrip just a moment ago. Earnhardt now seems to be pulling away from Tim Richmond, and that's somewhat of a surprise because Tim qualified so well, three and a half miles an hour faster than Dale, but Dale all afternoon, Benny, has proven that that car is, at least appears to be, faster than Tim's. He certainly appears to have the fastest car out there. He is getting through the turn so well. As I said a moment ago, I don't think that Earnhardt's going down the straightaway any better than any of the other cars, but he is certainly getting through the turn well. 35 laps have been completed. It is Dale Earnhardt, Tim Richmond, Brad Teague, and Daryl Waltrip. We'll be back with more of our live coverage from Darlington International Raceway. We are back at Darlington International Raceway in South Carolina for the Dixie Cup 200. There are the top five, Dale Earnhardt, Tim Richmond, Brad Teague, Darrell Waltrip, and Brett Bodine with 37 out of 147 laps completed. And there are the leaders coming out of the fourth turn onto the straightaway. Slower car moving to the inside. That's the number 71 car driven by Benny Curley. And the leaders putting a lap on him. Earnhardt now moving away from Tim Richmond. He's opened up even more racetrack between himself and Richmond. Earnhardt is handling so well that he's going to be able to get through the turns. And when they run across, tra across traffic, Bob, it's going to be the advantage of Earnhardt because he is getting through the turns so well. Darrell Waltrip is running in uh, fourth position here. Let's get down to the pits once again and check. That crash with Dale Jarrett has been more costly than just laps. He's behind the wall, as you can see, and the toe-in of the two tires in the front of the car is all knocked to kilter. So they're going to have to adjust that and then put him back out on the race track. Good race going on between Brad Teague and Darrell Waltrip. This is for third spot. There is Teague in car number 75, and right behind him is Darrell Waltrip in number 17. They go high on the track to pass the number 16 car of Jimmy Lawson, who came into this race today in his first Super Speedway event. Now, Darrell Waltrip is moving to the inside of Brad Teague here on the main straightaway. Let's see how they go into corner number one, and Darrell Waltrip has the spot. Darrell used that traffic just beautifully because the Lawson car got Brad Teague slowed down a little bit. Darrell Walter backed off, used that, came off the fourth corner hot, was able to pull alongside the 75. There's Earnhardt. Look, he's passing him inside, outside. Doing a fine job. The car there in front of him now kind of moves down in the fourth turn to block him. But certainly Earnhardt doing a fine job of going high and low to pass this slower traffic. Richmond's right 
might close back up. Earnhardt is not going to try to go outside of those cars in turn two because it's extremely, extremely slippery up high. He's not, there's no point in gambling right now, so he's content to follow those slow cars through turns one and two, and he's going to pass them up in three and four, and oh, he just gets by that slow And that slow car was Jack Land in car 07, the black 62 that they finally got around in quarter number one was driven by John Linville. Now, Tim Richmond having some difficulty in working his way through the slower traffic, and Earnhardt is in fine shape as he is now going to the inside and passing Ronnie Silver in car number 14. Silver, the car that uh, Earnhardt just went around, the only regular Grand National driver who has won this year in this division. The other winners have come from the regular Winston Cup competition driver. Morgan Shepard out of the race already. Let's go down to the pits. And just as Morgan came out of the infield care center, Dale Jarrett returned to the race. But Morgan, it's a big afternoon for you. What happened? Something broke in the engine and uh, all got all the wheels, Jackie. Why did you have to go to the infield care center? Did you get knocked about inside the car? No, I was okay. The NASCAR just always wants everybody to be checked after they've uh, been in an accident. Well, the streak stops at three. You're going to start it again next week? Yeah, we're going to get back on track. Uh, the car was working well today. Uh, we were just waiting for a pit stop to tighten the car up a little bit. And uh, it's just one of those things. Sometimes you lose one. You win some and you lose some. As long as none get rained out, I guess it's all right. Well, Benny, he is certainly one of the drivers that you have to consider as a favorite for tomorrow's race because he's going to be back in the car that he won Atlanta in, the uh, Race Hill Farms car number 47, and I'm sure hoping to uh, have a great race. And Tim Richmond looking to the inside of uh, Dale Earnhardt there, going down the back stretch and into number three, but Richmond unable to move into the lead. Man, Earnhardt just shouldered his way by. I think it was Bosco Lowe or somebody up in turn three. Earnhardt just shouldered his way by. Boy, these fellas are going through that traffic. Yes, I think that Morgan Shepard certainly tomorrow has a, a great opportunity to win two Winston Cup races in a row because he has J.C. Elder. Jake Elder, we saw him just a moment ago. Jake's kind of quiet, but he is one of the best crew chiefs there is down there in the garage area. Then you take a look at this racetrack and you see how wide it is. There's a lot of racetrack in there as Darrell Waldrop has now gotten up on the rear bumper of uh, second running Tim Richmond. The track is so wide, but there is so very little of it that's actually used as the racing group. Well, at 130 miles per hour, it is a wide racetrack, but these cars are running average 155, around 155 miles per hour. At that speed, it's very, very narrow. It takes all the racetrack to run that speed. If you put a slow car there or another car around you, you can't run 155. You have to slow down. And the, the question is, how much do you slow down? We can see Earnhardt, he's not slowing down very much. He's not slowing down at all, as a matter of fact. Earnhardt has won twice this year on the Grand National Circuit. He won the first two races of the year at Daytona and at Rockingham. And last weekend in Bristol, you recall, he finished in second position. So he's looking for his third win of the year in Grand National Competition here this afternoon at Darlington. Running behind him, Tim Richmond and Darrell Waldrop. Now we go back and see that Brad Teague has fallen off the pace just a little bit because the double zero of Brett Bodine has passed Teague. And now Bodine is in fourth. Teague is in fifth. The number two yellow and black car is driven by L.D. Ottinger. And then the red car is the number 69 of Rick Wilson that we mentioned a few moments ago, having started 17th and is now in seventh spot. Rick Wilson is driving in the Winston Cup event tomorrow. He's driving an Oldsmobile for the McClure brothers out of Abington, Virginia, and he had to take a rookie test Thursday before he could compete in that event. So that's how, <laughs> that's how new he is at this racetrack. And look, he's up to seventh spot already. And Brad Teague appears to be dropping back just a little bit. He challenged for second place for a while, but then dropped back to fourth and is continuing to fall back, although he's staying up in this group of cars right behind uh, Brett Bodine. L.D. Ottinger in car number two is in sixth spot. There he is. L.D., a veteran of the Grand National Division. He was a former champion of this Grand National Division when it was called late model sports division. I don't know, back in the middle 70s, I would think. 75 and 76, Ken Martin tells me. Oh, oh almost a spin off turn four. 
lot of traffic. Well, Diodger, the fellow we've talking about, almost fun coming off turn four. He's working heavily in traffic there with uh, Brad Teague and Rick Wilson. We'll take a look at it once again, Benny. Looks like the Rick Wilson, he might have gotten together off turn four. And we see him start. The car goes sideways. And LD does a good job controlling it. And that pink car there to the inside that was right ahead of uh, LD Ottinger is uh, driven by Mike Monticelli. It's car number 19. And we have a challenge for the lead as Tim Richmond shows some muscle in turn number one and recaptures first place. He went by Earnhardt with no trouble. I don't know. Jack, you might check with Earnhardt to see if he's got it, if his car is loose or he has something going wrong because Richmond certainly has made up a lot of ground. And Darrell Waltham right behind those two. We see him just about three or four car lengths behind Richmond and Earnhardt. Darrell definitely closing in in third place. Here they are coming off of the fourth corner once again. By the way, those fourth turn, third and fourth turn corners are banked at 20 degrees. And the turns they are in right now, turns one and two, banked at 22 degrees. There's Tim Richmond from Ashland, Ohio, who has recaptured the lead here. There is Earnhardt, who is running in second position. And, of course, Darrell Waltrip is now third. Donnie Allison, car number 23, also doing well back in the field. We'll keep an eye on him. He started 21st and is now up to eighth spot. Now Waltrip right on the back bumper of Dale Earnhardt. We'll see if these two go at it side by side here. Not this time. They go into corner number one in single file. But Waltrip certainly looks like he is on the verge of challenging for either second or perhaps even first. Right now, Darrell Waltrip certainly has the most impressive race car because he's passing good cars to get to third spot, and he's been able to gain on those two fellows. When they had a 15-car length advantage, he closed it up. Earnhardt doesn't look like he's having any problems right now. He's back on the back bumper of Richmond. And again, it's in the corners that Dale appears to be doing so well. That car handling very, very fine in the corners. He's able to sneak up right on the back bumper of Tim Richmond and even challenge for the lead in the turns. But Richmond, for the moment, hangs on to that top spot. The Levi Garrett Pontiac leading the GM Goodrich Pontiac. There is Donnie Allison that we mentioned, that red and white car. And Allison now running in eighth spot. There he is. Good. It's good to see Donnie Allison back in yeah, the race sure car. It's been a long time, and it really is good to see him back. And running so well, too. Had a great finish at uh, Daytona earlier this year. He was uh, doing so well, but has not competed in all the Grand National races this year. Donnie Allison, younger brother of Bobby Allison, and the white car right behind Donnie uh, is Kyle Petty, son of Richard Petty. So we've got two famous families running nose to tail out there. That is uh, eight and ninth position. And look at this, Earnhardt just blowing around him, Benny. Oh, an impressive, impressive pass there in turn number three. Earnhardt hasn't been impressive all day long, and that's the 21 car, David Pearson. They're lapping going down in turn one. Oh, man, Earnhardt just stood on the button and went by Richmond like he was sitting still there for the moment, although now Tim is not letting Dale get away with anything. But man, he looked impressive. Richmond now beginning to fall back just a little bit and Earnhardt stretching out the lead as we have completed 56 out of 147 laps in the Dixie Cup 200 for Darlington. Stay with us. Bob Jenkins, Benny Parsons, and Jack Aroot back at Darlington International Raceway where a development has occurred. Tim Richmond, who was running in second spot, has made a pit stop and has lost a lap. Also in for his top is Kyle Petty in car number 47. Tough luck for Tim Richmond in car number 15. He led this race three times for a total of 24 laps, and now Darrell Waltrip begins to challenge Dale Earnhardt for the lead. Darrell Waltrip, as I mentioned a moment ago, just before the break, has been the most impressive race car for the past 15, 20 laps. Looks like he's running as well as anyone out there. Dale Earnhardt, the leader, Darrell Waltrip, second spot. The Red and white cars, Darrell Walter. The black car we see in front, Dale Earnhardt. We'll try to get a report from Jack as to what exactly uh, is wrong with Tim Richmond. Jack, what's the problem? When Tim Richmond brought the car down to pit road, they thought the engine had expired, but it was still running. And they looked underneath the hood, 
and what they discovered and they think may be the problem is something right here in the blue box in the ignition system either the distributor the distributor cap or possibly the wires themselves they're contemplating right now bringing them in behind the wall and replacing all of those items but they're hoping that maybe a caution will come out and they could do it under a little bit of luxury under yellow well that takes uh, several minutes to replace that doesn't it Benny? so if he does come in under green he'll lose many 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 laps yes and there really isn't one continue on if you lose that many laps while we watch Dale Earnhardt and Darrell Walter, I see him pushing the Kyle Petty car out of the off-pit road back in the garage area. Looks like it's over for Kyle today. Kyle well, Petty, one of the drivers doing double duty here this weekend. So are these two guys that are battling for the lead, Earnhardt and Walter. Both of those will, of course, be in tomorrow's Trans-South 500 Winston Cup race that we'll have live for you at 1 o'clock here on ESPN. That's Larry Pollard in car 98 that Earnhardt is overtaken. Remember Larry last weekend involved with an incident with Jeff Bodine on the main straightaway at Bristol. Larry came back this weekend though, qualified 32nd position in that Nally California or Carolina AW Oldsmobile. But he's being lapped here this afternoon and is not in the top 10. Walter took a look on the inside of Earnhardt going in turn one. Was not able to get by, but Benny, you asked me to check on Dale Earnhardt. Well, we checked with Kirk Schemeldine, and he says, nothing wrong with Earnhardt. In fact, he's not talking on the radio at all. But the, my pick right now is the strongest car out there. It's got to be Darrell Walter. He's really stout. And Jack, he tried to take the lead going in turn three. He was alongside Earnhardt. Earnhardt closed the door on him. Darrell was not able to get by, but he had a run. I mean, he's trying him one more time down the front straightaway. I think he's going to get him into turn one. They're side by side. Oh, are they close? Waltrip to the inside, Earnhardt outside, and Earnhardt will not let Waltrip get the lead. Wow, wow. What a two cars, two turns, one and two side by side. I'm glad to see that because at least I know it can be done. There is Tim Richmond who has taken his car behind the wall and will be climbing out of that race car. But the action is so good on the racetrack. Let's go back and keep a close watch on it. The leaders are approaching some slower traffic. It'll be interesting to see how they get through all of this. And will there be a change of position? There's lots and lots of slow traffic. Four slower cars right direct in front of them. Bernard comes off the corner, goes inside the... That's the Bonicelli car. Walter was not able to get by, so Darrell's going to have to slow down going in turn three, pass him on the outside. Meanwhile, Earnhardt just blowing by those cars up in front of him on the inside. Off of the fourth corner, Earnhardt is behind the blue car, and now Walter is right behind Earnhardt again. They go into the first corner, and still Earnhardt, now he sneaks to the inside of the number 10 car, driven by Kenny Bouchard. Here comes Walter right behind him. And Bouchard got Earnhardt off the throttle. I thought maybe Walter would get alongside of him down the back straight. It was not able to. But Kenny Bouchard trying to save that lap. He don't want to go a lap down to the leaders. But look, there's nothing he can do about it. Earnhardt drives by up in turns three and four. Kenny Bouchard is running in 14th position, by the way. So we now have 13 cars that are on the lead lap. And Walter still has not gotten around Kenny Bouchard and lapped him. We'll see what happens here, and then we'll go down to the pit area and check with Jack Aroot, who has Tim Richmond. Now Earnhardt does get around Kenny Bouchard. Jack? Well, we're here with Tim Richmond in early afternoon, Timmy. What put you out? Well, we're not real sure, Jackie. Uh, something in the motor started to lose power, like it started to drop a valve or something. And uh, we didn't feel like staying out there and maybe burning the bearings out and kicking the rods out and then losing a the race car and a motor. So we're, we took one uh, and not the other today. If you had to pick one right now, Walter for Earnhardt to win the race, who would it be? I'm not real sure. Walter, you know, he's, I don't think he's showing everything. I know he was just trying to stay within sight of us, but uh, I don't know. Earnhardt's real tough. He's got the chassis working real good in, in uh, three and four. He's a little bit off in one and two, but uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. Well, he'll wait and watch right here for, like the rest of us to see who goes to victory lane. All right, we thought we were going to have a caution, but we did not. Now Waltrip goes inside on the straightaway, and again they go into the first corner side by side. Darrell, is, he knows what to expect this time, but Earnhardt is able to do it on the outside one more time, Bob. We thought we were going to have a yellow because Rick Mast in car number 22 started smoking badly in corner. 
car number three. He got the car to the inside of the racetrack and is in his pit on the back stretch. So no caution, but Rick Masson appears is going to be out of the race. And believe me, it was a couple of anxious seconds for Dale Earnhardt and Darrell Walter because he flew right directly in front of the leaders, Earnhardt and Walter. Good nose to tail competition here in this Grand National Race at Darlington International Raceway as Dale Earnhardt in car number eight has the lead, but right behind him is Daryl Walter in number 17. Brett Bodine continues to run third, then Brad Teague running in fifth position is L.D. Ottinger, sixth, Rick Wilson, seventh is the number 23 car, driven by Donnie Allison in eighth position is Davey Allison, and in uh, 10th spot is the number 11 car of Jack Ingram. Bob, we're going to be seeing pit stops in just a few minutes, and right, you know, what's the strategy on the pit stop? Does Earnhardt or Walter just put fuel in the car so that they're able to keep going and not and try to get in the lead? If Darrell Walter can just put fuel in the car and not change tires, that means he can probably get out in front of Earnhardt and take the lead. If Bernhardt changes tires, then he probably will handle a little bit, handle a little bit better when he gets on the racetrack. So it's interesting to see what kind of strategy we're going to see when these fellas start making their pits, which should be pretty soon. Yeah, we're we halfway right now, 100 left. That's right. Uh, we have completed half of the race. Now, Benny, what is the tire rule this weekend here at Darlington for these cars? They can change two tires on the car. Walter tried it again. He got alongside Earnhardt down the back straightaway. Earnhardt just insists that he's not going to be past it. We have had three caution periods in this race. One for Kenny Burks, who slammed the wall in the very first turn. Also, Charlie Luck, who had a hard encounter with the inside wall, coming off of corner number four. And then we had uh, an incident in which Morgan Shepard blew an engine and lost control down in corner number three. Let's go down to the pits once again. And I'm with Dale Earnhardt's crew chief, Kirk Shelmerdine. Kirk, when you come in for fuel, do you take on tires or do you just do a gas and go? No, we'll get tires. It takes just as long to gas and let's put tires on there. Well, there's the answer to your question, and we've got a spin out on the track, so it'll be under caution. And it's Ed Barrier in car number 60 who spins and bumps the wall out in corner number three. It retains control now, but the yellow flag is out, and this will cause the pit stops. This is a break for Earnhardt and Walter because they were needed to make a pit stop, change those tires. Now they're going to be able to do it on the caution flag, uh, not lose any time to some of the cars who are running behind them. Ed Barrier still is on the racetrack, crossing the start-finish line here on the main straightaway. We have pits on both the front stretch and the back stretch here at Darlington, and his pit apparently on the back stretch. He's going to try to make it over there. Obviously, something letting go on that car that caused him to spin in just about the same area of the racetrack that Morgan Shepard had his problem. Now, here come the leaders into the pits. Dale Earnhardt, followed by Daryl Waltrip. We'll see who gets in and out first. Dale Earnhardt comes in first, locks it up, as does Daryl Waltrip. The Earnhardt crew goes to work on the right side. Outside tires being exchanged also on Daryl Waltrip's machine. Both cars taking in 22 gallons of fuel. Now, Earnhardt's crew is raising the spoiler on the back. They're banging it back up. That means that he's got not handling as much as they'd like. He's the first one down and away. Meanwhile, they're adjusting on the wedge bolt on the right, left side of Darrell Waltrip's car. So he's being kept in the pits just a little bit longer. They're not completed yet. They filled it up with fuel, and now he's away as well. Now, a much longer stop by Darrell, but he really didn't lose that much since we are under caution bumper of Dale Earnhardt. So, pit stops have been made. We're still going to be yellow for a couple of more laps to make sure the racetrack is free of any oil. Then we'll resume this battle between Earnhardt and Waltrip at Darlington International Raceway. We're delighted you could join us today for the Dixie Cup 200 Grand National Race from Darlington International Raceway that's being brought to you by Mr. Goodrich. No one knows your GM car better than Mr. Goodrich. No one. We are just past the halfway point, and we are yellow, and this is the reason. Benny Parsons. Ed Barrier, the car has been smoking a little bit all day long. This time it looks like he had a little more serious problem. Something broke inside the engine. The moisture got under the wheels. He spun going in turn three. And the caution flag was a 
good break for several cars. Joe Thurman, Tommy Houston, and uh, Jack Ingram in the Skull Bandit almost lapped. Now they're able to come back. They're right on the back bump of the leaders. Green flags out. Here we go. The racing resumes on the 79th lap. They charge into corner number one. It is Dale Earnhardt who is the leader of this race. In second spot now is Waltrip. Third, L.D. Ottinger. Fourth is Brett Bodine. And in fifth position is Rick Wilson. There is Waltrip still challenging for the lead. Both Drivers asked for adjustments on their cars during the pit stop. Both apparently thought their cars were just a little loose out there. And that's the reason that Waldrop was in for a much longer period than Earnhardt. One of the crew members actually getting inside that race car and making some adjustments. Yes, these quarter panel windows we see in the rear quarter of these automobiles Bob, there's a piece of plastic in there, a piece of plexiglass, so they're not able to reach inside the car and change the chassis as they used to. Now they have to literally crawl inside the car and turn those bolts back in the rear of the, of the driver's compartment. Now it's going to be interesting to see if uh, either car was improved. And we have a car spinning. Kenny Bouchard loses it on four. He hits the wall to the inside in just about the same spot that Charlie Luck had problems earlier in the race. Kenny Bouchard this time causes a yellow flag. Don't look like there's very much damage to the... Well, there might be a little bit of excessive damage to the right rear, but the run, right front came around and hit the wall, but it doesn't, doesn't look like there's a lot of damage to the car, but I guess the toe in is probably knocked out. I'm told that the, the thing is towed in pretty badly. He's going to have to come in and make some pretty extensive uh, adjustments to the car. You know, there's so much apron here that you really are able to scrub off a little bit of speed uh, when you lose it up there before you actually make contact with the wall. There we see Rick Wilson trying to pass the Kenny Bouchard car. They got together, touched. Bouchard spins the car, hits the inside retaining wall with the rear. The front comes around, slaps it, and that's when he knocked the front suspension out of Kilter. So Kenny Bouchard, a regular modified driver, is in the pits, and they're trying to see if that car can be salvaged and got back out there on the racetrack for more action. As you can see with the hood up in the car, the car is from Massachusetts. Long place, Bazima Buick, is that what it says? I think it says on the hood of the car. They're running quite a few. That fella, this year, they're going to run quite a few events with Kenny Bouchard down in the southeast in the Grand National Division. This is our... Uh, fifth caution period of the afternoon. Several cars have dropped out of competition here this afternoon. And uh, we have seen at least two cars drop out because of accidents as Waltrip comes in for another pit stop. Kenny Burks and Charlie Luck and Morgan Shepard all involved in accidents. And you can see the other drivers that have dropped out of competition. There we see Jack Ingram in the pits and Darrell Waltrip. Both cars changing left side tires. And that's uh, Jack Arute has it down in the pits. And Benny, that was a break because now these guys have got literally four new Goodyear tires on. They changed the right size just, what, two laps ago, and now they've got the left sides on. So despite the NASCAR rule, they've taken on four new skins. And Dale Earnhardt, meanwhile, is, has opted to stay on the racetrack. He's leading the event, but he only has the new right side tires. And the tires aren't worn out, worn out on these automobiles. Certainly, they don't wear out in 100 miles, but new tires just have certain adhesion characteristic characteristics to the, about the it makes the race car feel so much better and run so much better jackie do you have something for us yeah i was going to tell you just as soon as daryl walter came into the pits kirk shelmerdine looked got into a huddle with his crew to say maybe we ought to come in for it and i'm going to see if i can get a word with him right now kirk Waltrip's taken on four tires and you've only got two on the right side why didn't you bring them in well we had trouble with the car being at the start of the race, it was pretty good right there, so we didn't want to fool with it right now. Well, there you have it, a gamble. One side of the lead duo decided to come in for four. This guy decides to keep his driver out with two. Yeah, but if the car feels okay, as Dale says it is, why uh, why bother with it, right? Why bother? That's exactly right. And, and the new tire advantage will probably go away in about five laps, and it's probably going to take Darrell Waltrip at least five laps to pass the cars that he's going to have to pass to get back up behind Earnhardt. I mean, he's got to go by Tommy Houston, Brad Teague, Donnie Allison, uh, the Rick Wilson automobile, Davey Allison, Brett Bodine, L.D. Ottinger. You know, there's lots of good cars between he and the Dale Earnhardt automobile. 
I think he's probably got a better race car with four tires, but the advantage is going to be used up by the time he gets there. Waltrip comes back out onto the racetrack in ninth spot. We do have the two abreast formation in corner number four with the pace car to the inside of the track on the apron, pulling into the pits, and here we go again with the resumption of the Dixie Cup 200. The green flag displayed once again. 85 out of 147 laps have been completed. Now we'll watch Daryl Waltrip work through the traffic. Or will he? Perhaps Dale Earnhardt can run away with things now. There's the field moving through the first and second corners. Everybody gets through in good shape. L.D. Ocher now right up on the back bumper of Dale Earnhardt. And Ocher appears to be challenging for the lead. He looked inside but couldn't get the job done. Sure went down that back straightaway, but when they got to the turn, as always, Earnhardt just pulls away. And Look at Darrell Walter. He's still behind Tommy Houston. Doesn't appear to be uh, moving up at all, as a matter of fact. He's on the inside now of Tommy Houston and will pass Tommy, but those slower lap cars are ahead of him, and it's going to be a few more laps before Walter can thread his way through this traffic and perhaps put himself in a challenging position. There he goes by the Mike Monticello car. He tries to, he's not able to get by. Walter right. is sure, I mean, he's having his problems trying to get by these four cars. Finally he gets by, but he's got to do it in the turn. And he has moved up to eight spot now, but still a lot of racetrack between himself and the leader, Dale Earnhardt. And Earnhardt is now beginning to pull away from second place, and we've had a change in second place as the number double zero car driven by Brett Bodine has moved around El Diacher. There is the interval. It's an entire backstretch interval between Waltrip and Dale Earnhardt. So a lot of racetrack to cover before he can get up there once again. There is wow. Bodine swinging off the fourth corner, getting way up high. He got a little bit closer to that wall, certainly he wanted to, that's for sure. Bodine now in second. Officer is in and doing a fine job out there is Davey Allison, the number American viewing. And we saw the, the 10, blue number 10 on the racetrack at Kenny Bouchard. They've made some repairs. He's back on the speedway trying to get as many Grand National points as he can. Second and third position. Wow. And El Ottinger. You can see it's very obvious there, Benny. There's a bump down there in the fourth corner. There is a bump. And Bodine is running just a little bit too high off that corner. That bump is going to affect him more than would Earnhardt, who's down lower on the racetrack. Two, three, four, and five. Bodine, Ottinger, Davey Allison, and Rick Wilson running in that order. Ahead of this group of cars, Dale Earnhardt, who has now opened up about a 10 to 15 car length advantage over Brett Bodine. And there's a good look at Brett, the younger brother of Jeff. Bodine, but they fall back into single file formation going into corner number one. Exciting Grand National Racing from Darlington International Raceway in South Carolina. Come back for more in just a moment. We are back at Darlington International Raceway for the Dixie Cup 200 Grand National Race and that interval that Daryl Brother Dale Earnhardt had opened up has completely diminished Benny and Brett Bodine now is looking strong and uh, right behind him L.D. Oster. I really don't understand what happened to Earnhardt. He had a 15, 20 car length advantage just a moment ago. Right now, it's down to three or four car lengths. And he isn't, this doesn't seem to be going through the turns like he was a few moments ago. Look, down the back straightaway, Brett Bodine just pulls right up on his rear bumper. Bodine, who spun a couple of times last week at Bristol, is certainly in a much better performance here this afternoon on the high banks of Darlington. Race for third spot back there. Davy Alice was alongside the LD Yager automobile in turn four, but was not able to get by. Davy Allison from Alabama looking very strong here in this race. The average speed, by the way, 122.320 miles an hour. And now Bodine goes for the lead and gets it into turn number three. Well, Earnhardt's got 
have something wrong with his automobile. I'm sure Jack LaRue is down with Kirk right now trying to find out what it is, but Brett Bodine has the lead. And the car you see in the very back of the picture right there, oh, here comes Earnhardt back. Earnhardt will not stand for this, but he cannot capture the lead once again. He pulls nearly alongside Bodine in the second corner. Now we'll see what happens as they come out of the backstretch, and look who has suddenly come into the picture once again and has brought the lead back. That is Darrell Waltrip. He's in sixth spot. Bodine leading Earnhardt right alongside. Here is Earnhardt going for the lead and getting it once again to fourth corner. Now Davey Allison moves to the inside and looks for third. I tell you what, it was fairly easy for Darrell to... It was fairly easy for Darrell Walter to get there, but how he's going to get by, it's going to be very tough for him to get by. Good race cars in front of him right now. All right, Benny, now how much drafting are they doing out there? They're doing quite a bit of drafting. You know, at 155, 60 miles an hour, those cars are breaking lots of wind, and they're, they're doing a lot of drafting down these straightaways. There was Lee Walter on the yes. inside of the Rick Wilson automobile trying to take that spot away. Waltrip going for fifth here. They come down the straightaway, and they're side by side, and Waltrip cannot get the spot. Now he does, going into the first corner. Benny, you were talking and speculating that maybe there was a problem with Dale Earnhardt. I checked the lap sheets. Since that last caution, he's been turning in the high 32s, low 33s, lap after lap after lap. So there's really nothing wrong with Dale, just everybody else got a little faster. Well, thank you very much, Jack Root. I, you know, just watching the race and not timing these automobiles, it looked like that Earnhardt had a problem, but I'm glad to know that these other cars are just running that much faster. But now he once again begins to stretch out the advantage he has over Fred Bodine, and you really got to wonder if Earnhardt just maybe laid back and said, okay, Fred, let's see what you got, and then once Fred did get the lead, Earnhardt says, okay, I'm going to go back in the lead. Don't think Earnhardt's built that way. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's going to lead every lap he possibly can. And look who is continuing to move up, Daryl Waldrop. Now right behind Davey Allison on the racetrack as the leaders come off of the fourth corner once again. And he's trying to Davey down the front row. He's going to get by. Rick Wilson's going to try to follow him, but Rick can't make it. Daryl does. Daryl Waldrop is in fourth spot now. Ahead of him is L. Diopter, Brett Bodine, and of course our leader, Dale Earnhardt. Waldrop right up on the back bumper now of L.D. Otcher in that number two. Both cars go wide in corner number three. L.D. running a very high line off three and four, just like Brett Bodine. Looks like the groove has moved up. That's where the cars want to, where the fellas want to run up there. Look at her right on the back bumper of Audrey in turn one. Oh, look at this. Nose to tail on the racetrack. Great racing and for the third year in a row, the Dixie Cup 200 Grand National Race turns out to be an absolutely, unbelievably exciting race. Audrey, let's carve up. Now, Darrell's going to try to get alongside of him in turn four if he can. He can't make it, though. Ottinger letting that car slide high in the third turn, but Darrell Waltrip was unable to take advantage of the situation. There's Rick now Wilson. we have Rick Wilson challenging Davey Allison behind the group, but the positions hold. Now Waltrip, once again, he's got a shot. He's alongside, going down the back straightaway. He's alongside the LD Ottinger automobile. And going in turn three. He gets it. Waltrip has moved to third and is charging toward the front. Jeff Bodine is the car that he now sets his sights on in second spot. I'm here in the pits with Eddie Jones, the crew chief for Darrell Walters machine. Eddie, you took four tires. You've come from the back, come all the way to the front to challenge. Have you used up much of the race car, though? No, I don't think so, Jackie. First car of the race, we were just riding. We could run fast, but we couldn't race. Now I think we've got the car where we can race, Dale. We got the tires. We got to the front. Now Dale's just trying to pick his way through and get up to, to where he can ride with Dale and race him when the end comes. When you say ride with Dale, is that the strategy? Wait to the last couple of laps before you show your hand? Well, the way this racetrack is, and as tough, as tough as it is, as tough as Dale is, and as tough as Daryl is, I think he wants to wait to just right moment. Well, it's waiting time down here in the Budweiser pit, gentlemen. And Waltrip is challenging for second, and at the end of the back stretch, he gets it from Brett Bodine. 
Waltrip has moved into second position. And now, Dale Earnhardt leads this race by, well, maybe 20 car lengths. But I have a feeling, Betty, that that interval is going to close up quickly. I think you're exactly right. I think Darrell Waltrip is going to be able to catch the Earnhardt automobile. We're going to see a great race to the end. And there is the leader off the second turn, and there is second place, Darrell Waltrip. That's how close they are. We'll be back with more of our live coverage from Darlington and the Dixie Cup 200 after this. We have a new leader in the Dixie Cup 200, Darrell Waltrip, has passed Dale Earnhardt, and Waltrip is the leader. That was a nice move on the back stretch, and Earnhardt <laughs> just, just, uh, there was nothing he could do. Walter there was nothing he could do, but I tell you one thing, he sure tried his best to get that lead back. Now, L. D. Ottinger in car number two, who was as high as third, has dropped back in the past few laps. And this is why, while uh, we were away, this is what happened. Well, he goes on the outside of Davy Austin, turn three, and it's tough to go through there two abreast, as L. D. Ottinger found out. We saw Earnhardt and Walter do that early on in the race, but it's very tough to do, and L.D. Andre realizes that right now. Look, three cars got by him. Yeah, he's back to seventh position now, L.D. Andre. There's a good look at L.D. From Newport, Tennessee. I'm sure all the folks over there in Newport are wishing L.D. good luck today. We have ten cars on the lead lap, and here they are. The leader is Darrell Waltrip, second Dale Earnhardt, Brett Bodine, then Davey Allison, Rick Wilson, Brad Teague, the number two car of L.D. Ottinger, then Tommy Houston, Donnie Allison, and Jack Ingram. Those ten cars are on the lead lap, and there are the leaders. And you can see that Waltrip now with about a five or six car link advantage on Dale Earnhardt. 111 laps of 147 have been completed. I was concerned that... Darrell Walter, when he changed those four tires and when he got through all that traffic, that his car would be used up. It looks like I was worrying for nothing because his car certainly wasn't used up when he got by. He was able to pass Earnhardt, and right now he's directing it out. Darrell certainly the strongest car on the race track at this point. And Dale Earnhardt has to be concerned with his tires and the way that the car not performed as well as it had in the past in the uh, early stages of this race there's the number 63 of jimmy hensley who has come in for a pit stop hensley of course used to drive the double zero car that brett bodine now handles but and there is jack ingram from Asheville, north carolina the defending champion of the grand national division and the driver who was credited with winning this race last year, although he did receive some help from Harry Gant in the victory. There we see Jack trying to get by Bosco Lowe, and the, I don't know, I'm not sure that other car, that's Randy LaJoy in the car right behind Jack Ingram. And we go back to the leaders once again. Waltrip setting the car into turn number three. Look at the interval he has opened up all of a sudden on Dale Earnhardt. Well, it looks like the interval's about 15, 20 car lengths, and I'm sure that Darrell Walters right now is not trying to stretch out any more than, than he has to. Now, and here is the race for third spot, and it is a great race. It sure is. It involves the Miller American, driven by Jamie Allison. Right ahead of him, the double zero car of Brent Bodine. This is the battle for third spot in turn number two. Bodine, you folks will remember you race fans will remember the car used to be driven by Sam R. the Thomas Brothers Country M out of Asheville, North Carolina. Been a dominant car on the Grand Circuit for many, many years. A fine run this afternoon by Davey Allison. He started this race in 10th position and is now battling with Bodine for third. An interesting situation last weekend at Bristol and along with that, ESPN and NASCAR present a track back. In stock car racing, fuel consumption can make the difference between finishing first and maybe sixth or seventh. So how do drivers find out just how much gas they're consuming? Well, they pull up to the gas pumps with their 11-gallon dump cans and fill them up. And as they're done, their crew members are given a little sheet of paper that tells them exactly how much fuel went into the cans. 
They take that back to the team, they calculate their fuel consumption, and decide how many more laps they can go before their next pit stop. Interesting situation last week when Jack Ingram carried his sub-10 into the third turn before he lost it. We have a yellow flag here at Darlington because of Mike Botticelli, who has scraped the wall and come to a stop in turn number two. So this could very well cause another round of pit stops and could cause a very serious uh, complication for many, many drivers. We'll come back to see how it all comes out in just a moment. Tomorrow at 1 o'clock Eastern Time, we'll be here live for the Trans-South 500 Winston Cup race. And my partner in the broadcast booth today, Benny Parsons, has third quickest qualifying speed and will start from inside row number two in that race. And we hope you will join us for the Trans-South 500. There you can see the baseball games that are uh, going on throughout the nation this afternoon. The Phillies leading the uh, New York Mets 4-2 to two in the fifth inning. And the other baseball scores from around the nation this afternoon that you will be caught up on on SportsCenter later this afternoon at 6.30 Eastern Time. We're yellow here at Darlington because of an incident involving Mike Botticelli and the car is still up against the wall and he is receiving some attention from the track crew. So we are under yellow. Dale Earnhardt has made a pit stop, but Daryl Waltrip has not. It could mean some great racing and we'll find out about that when we return. Canadians and Bruins at seven o'clock tonight here on ESPN. The track crew just now returning to its station after having cleaned up the incident over in turn number two, Mike Botticelli scraping the wall, but I think he's going to be able to continue in the race. Well, let's talk about uh, Rick Wilson a little bit in car number 69. Rick has had a strong performance here this afternoon. He is a uh, Winston Cup driver that will be uh, going uh, in tomorrow's race. His best finish in Winston Cup competition this year is seventh at Daytona's from Bartow, Florida. Well, you see that Captain Cody's on the car. That's a restaurant down in Daytona Beach. Roy Yates, the owner of the restaurant, I saw him down earlier. He's here to watch his car, Rudy's car on, Rudy Wilson on both today and tomorrow. Well, now we saw some uh, interesting pit stops during this uh, most recent yellow flag situation. Jack, update us on exactly what happened. Well, Earnhardt is the only leader that came in and literally to take on tires. He took the tires that he needed. Waltrip, however, stayed out. And at first I questioned that decision. With just a scant, what, 26, 27 laps to go, I talked to Eddie Jones, and Eddie said, well, Daryl says the car's running very well. And they waited until Earnhardt came in. Eddie radioed to Daryl what Earnhardt had done. Daryl radioed back the decision and said, I'm staying out. Well, Benny, if you were in the same situation out there, what would you be more comfortable with, Daryl's setup or Dale's? Well, you know, a while ago, I thought that Darrell Waltrip had a disadvantage because he had to start behind so many good race cars. Dale Earnhardt has the same problem, although Darrell Waltrip had, what was it, eight or nine that he had to pass? Yeah. Earnhardt only has to pass three. three right. Jack Ingram, Rick Wilson, and Brett Bodine. So it, Earnhardt's job is a little bit easier, but I don't know. I think maybe Waltrip may be just as tough as Earnhardt. It's going to be very exciting the last 26 laps, I'll tell you that. This will complete lap 122. And the race is 147 laps. We are back to green. Let's see what happens here. The field accelerating down into turn number one. It is Daryl Waltrip on the point at this time. Brett Bodine is second. Rick Wilson third. Then Jack Ingram. And then Dale Earnhardt. Behind him, L.D. Ottinger, A.B. Allison, and Brad T. Donnie Allison also running in the top 10, but Donnie with a very poor start there is dropping back on the back stretch. What happened to Donnie was he got high down in turns one and two. He got up there and he was had, just had to back off the throttle to make it through the corner. Neil coming down the straightaway once again. Car moving to the inside. There are two cars to the inside. L.D. Ottinger is one of those that has dropped off the pace. The other is Haskell Willingham in car number 90. L.D. Ottinger, who has run in the top 10 all afternoon is having trouble. He is on the apron of the racetrack in turn number two. There is the leader, though, Daryl Waldrop, 
still setting the pace the interval between first second third there's fourth place and that is dale earnhardt you know earnhardt's coming he's used up everything he has right now to get to the front to catch darrell walter you know he's running out of time he, he has about 30 miles but that's not a long time in a stock car race especially when you're turning last year just a little over 30 seconds in length it is not a long time at all there is Waltrip into corner number three. L.D. Otcher is coming in for a pit stop. And that car appears to have serious problems. Perhaps a tire has gone down, but they don't appear to be in any hurry to change the tires. Now they move to the right side and begin to uh, examine the rubber, but I think it's something more serious than that. There is some sheet metal damage on the right side of the automobile. It looks like that the right front fenders pushed back into the tire just a little bit some of the spotters around the racetrack thinks he might have scraped the outside retaining wall up in turns three and four as he did earlier on in the broadcast well it would certainly seem that way because there is some uh, body damage you can see the crew has brought out the hammers trying to pound that sheet metal back from the tire well earnhardt is definitely on the move and he's up to third spot and closing in well, he's still four spots. No, he is still fourth. That's right. He's closing in on third. Rick Wilson. That's right. But Rick Wilson and Fred Bodine, they got a little private race of their own going right now. And the problem is if they let if uh, Earnhardt goes by, he will help one of the cars. Like he'll help Wilson get by Bodine. Bodine don't want that to happen. Here they are in the fourth corner. Earnhardt moving alongside. And Rick Wilson getting that car up way high, almost scraping the ball, putting a Darlington stripe on it, perhaps. He grabs the position, though, at the end of the main straightaway. Earnhardt has now moved to third. Next will be Brett Bodine. There is Bodine. You can see the interval between first and second. Here comes Earnhardt at third. Exactly 20 laps to go right now. Can he do it, Benny? He probably can, because he's running very well, and Earnhardt, Having to pick his, I mean, Darrell Walters right now had to pick his way around slow cars. He passed the slow car up in turn four that affected him dramatically. He probably lost one second that lap trying to get by that slower car. Yeah, normally you would uh, go to the high side to pass the slower car on the straightaway, but Darrell had to dive to the inside to make the uh, pass on that car, which was the number 07 car of Jack Lane. I don't think that Dale Earnhardt could do it. I really don't, unless we have another yellow and unless uh, things change dramatically. As long as we stay under green, I don't think that Earnhardt can catch Darrell Walter Ball though he has moved around Brett Bodine on the inside and taken over second. He made that pass on Bodine up in turns three and four. Looked very easy. He has nothing in front of him right now except there. Darrell Walters about 30, 40 car lengths in front of him. We're going to see right now who has the better race car. Darrell Walker or Dale Earnhardt. And the interval is just a little over three seconds. And we will try to keep tabs on that interval to see if indeed Earnhardt is closing in. There he is. Earnhardt in second position now with Waltrip coming off the fourth corner in the lead. He completes 130 laps. We have a 17 to go in the Dixie Cup 200. Bodine and Rick Wilson staying close together out there on the racetrack, contesting third spot. But our interest right now is Dale Earnhardt and whether he can close the gap on Darrell Waltrip. Down in the pit area, here's Jack Aroot with an interesting guest. Well, this fellow's been watching the fortunes rise and fall all afternoon of his brother, Brett. This is Winston Cup star, Daytona 500 champion, Jeff Bodine. And Jeffrey, it looks as if Brett has really learned how to get around the track too tough to tame, but he couldn't hold off Earnhardt. Well, Dale came in and changed left side tires. Brett selected to stay out. We could have come in, but he said he wanted to stay out. He felt he had a better chance to do that. And yeah, Dale came up through there and passed him. He's holding his own right now. He's running really good. He's, he's uh, the first Grand National driver in line behind those two Winston Cup drivers. He's running a really good race. The car is a little tight. It wants to push a little too much. Jackie in the corner wants to go straight. We would have liked to come in and made an adjustment, but he elected to stay out. He thought it would be better. Well, Jeffrey says his brother Brett's first in class this afternoon. Well, he has run a very strong race, and it certainly uh, is a feather in his cap to have performed so well on this racetrack. Brett Bodine, car double zero in third. Now, the interval between first and second is not shortening, it is growing. It was 3.01 seconds. 
two laps ago was 3.5. Now it's up to 3.9 seconds. So Darrell Waltrip is extending his lead over Dale Earnhardt. I'm sure that was an anxious moment for Darrell Waltrip as he went by the Kenny Bouchard automobile. When you pass those cars on the inside going in these turns, you really never know if they realize you're there or not. You're always expecting to not realize you're there and come down and run into you. But this time, Kenny Bouchard knew he was there, gave him lots of room. This may come down to a better race for second, third, and fourth position if Waltrip can continue to hold on his lead right here because, as you can see, it's about a half a straightaway advantage for Waltrip. And Dale Earnhardt is not putting distance on the Red Bodine and Rick Wilson car like I thought he would. They are staying right there with him, although now, because of the Kenny Bouchard car, the slower car, Earnhardt does stretch out the interval between himself and Brett Bodine. There is a leader, Waltrip. And right here will be Dale Earnhardt. That's the interval between the two. It's now about four seconds. So we will continue with more from Darlington and the Dixie Cup 200 right after these messages. We are back in Darlington where some great racing is going on for 6th, 7th, and 8th spot. In 6th position right now is Brad Teague in car number 75. 7th is Jack Ingram. Rather, 7th is uh, Tommy Houston. And 8th is Jack Ingram. And Jack has lost a couple of positions in the last lap. The last lap, he was 6th spot. Brad, Brad Teague passed him between 3 and 4. And Tommy Houston was able to get by him down the front right away. And running right ahead of Brad Teague in that blue car is Davey Allison at number 95, who was in 5th spot. Concerned, well, it appears to be Daryl Waltrip's race at this point. As we take a look there at Davy Allison, who is running fifth, it appears to be a Daryl Waltrip race at this point because he is maintaining about a four or even four and a half second lead over Dale Earnhardt. There is Daryl coming down the straightaway, and there is Earnhardt. And behind Earnhardt, of course, third place Brett Bodine and fourth place Rick Wilson. But Again, Benny, I don't think that Dale is going to be able to close that interval. It doesn't look like, you know, there's Daryl's wife, Stevie Walter, watching her husband at work. You know, Daryl Walter was four and a half miles an hour slower than Tim Richmond. But when this race started, you realize that Daryl Walter had an opportunity to win because this car has been running up front all day long. When we went into this NASCAR Grand National race, Jack Ingram was the points leader with 733, and Brad Teague was 683. And Tommy Houston was third in the points with 680. And you saw just a few minutes ago how those drivers were battling for position out there, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. And so the points are going to tighten up, it would appear, at the conclusion of this race. Darrell Waltrip, of course, not in uh, a good point situation because he hasn't competed in all of the races. He was 26 going into this race in the points. And here is Brad Teague in car number 75 who is getting a serious challenge from Tommy Houston at number 6. Houston to the inside. And Teague able to hold on to the spot. And we remember Tommy Houston early of the first or second lap of the race something went through his windshield. They put a piece of plexiglass over it. Right in front of his face, that is plexiglass. Maybe bothering Tommy just a little bit. You can imagine the tremendous wind force upon that windshield. And uh, it's really held together well. It has. Brad Teague holding it off. He's still holding that spot. Brad Teague in car number 75. Houston tries it one more time. They're alongside. Down in turn one. And once again, Brad with the better line going into corner number one. And Houston getting a little squirrely there in corner number one and two. What happened to Tommy was when he went down in turn one, the left front wheel touched the apron, which upset the race car. He took him almost all the corner to get the thing back under control. We haven't talked much about the V6 engine here today, but uh, it certainly is an engine that has performed well in this division. Of course, it had won the last two races with Morgan Shepard, but uh, not completely a factor here this afternoon. No, I think that uh, I'm not sure how many of the cars out there have V6s and whether they're the Chevrolet V6 or the Buick V6, but uh, I think 
think maybe Davy Allison has a V6. He's probably a Buick V6. Uh, Tommy Houston, I think, has a V6. So there, there is room for that engine in, for, in Grand National Racing. And the best thing, this is the testing ground for this engine for Winston Cup Racing probably in 1988. Continuing to watch Brad T and Tommy Houston contesting positions out there on the racetrack. As we have completed 144 laps, we've only got three more to go. Darrell Waldrop appears to be on his way to victory. He is in turn number four. When he comes down, it will be two more laps to go. The white flag will come out next time for Darrell Waldrop. Well, this race appears to be in hand. Let's once again talk about tomorrow, Benny. You'll be out there on this track starting in third position. We wish you well, but who do you anticipate as being strong tomorrow? Well, it's certainly Dale Earnhardt, Darrell Waltrip, the fellows that we've seen out there today are going to be very tough. Jeff Bodine, the pole sitter, I was out there with him yesterday afternoon. He is extremely strong. There's probably 10 or 15 guys that I can name that uh, can win the race tomorrow, but those four will certainly be there when it's over. Darrell Waltrip has received a white flag. There is less than a lap to go in the 60 Cup 200. He comes off of corner number two, moving to the inside of Benny Curley in car number 71. Now Waltrip moving into turn number three. Waltrip now one turn away from victory in this Grand National race. Here he is off of the fourth corner. Darrell Waltrip from Franklin, Tennessee wins the Dixie Cup 200 Grand National race here at Darlington International Raceway. Now we watch this battle between Brad Teague and Tommy Houston. Here they come off the corner and Teague once again with an outstanding performance finishes in sixth spot. There's the winner, Darrell Waltrip. Second was Dale Earnhardt. Third was Brett Bodine. Fourth was the number 69 of Rick Wilson. And in fifth spot was Davey Allison. Stevie Waltrip is happy. I'm sure Darrell is too. We will, of course, be talking with him in victory lane in just a moment. A great performance by Darrell here this afternoon. And again, he did everything just right as far as a tire decision is concerned. I think you're exactly right, Bob. He did make the right decision today. He decided to stop and change four tires, get behind. And once he got in front, he decided to stay on the racetrack. Good decision by Darrell Walter. All right, we will be back to talk with him in victory lane in just a moment. Darrell Walter wins here at Darlington this afternoon. We'll be right We're back at Darlington, the Dixie Cup 200 over. Darrell Waltrip has won. Before we go down to victory lane, we are going to excuse Benny Parsons here because he has a practice session coming up in just a few moments. But, Benny, the best of luck tomorrow. We hope that you do well. I hope so. I hope it will be good, Bobby. It certainly has been a pleasure working with you the last two weekends, and I look forward to doing it again in North Wilkesboro. That's right. Just next weekend when we will again uh, have some great NASCAR racing. Good luck to you tomorrow, Benny. Thank you. All right, down to the pit area now, and Jack Arood in victory lane. And this is not an uncommon place for Daryl Waltrip, but on a Saturday afternoon, normally it's on Sundays. Congratulations, Daryl. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, just a super run by the car and by the crew. Uh, I have so many unsung heroes on this team that uh, work just like everybody else does on Grand National cars. But they work on this little sportsman car for me and keep it tuned up real nice. And I'd like to thank Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company for some good tires today and also for Ron Neal, a prototype engineer up in Chicago that built this motor and it runs so good. And of course, Eddie and all the boys that work so hard on the car. I'm uh, want to thank the Lord for a good, safe race because uh, I had a couple opportunities there. I think I had a couple of angels with me today. <laughs> Let's talk about the crew, though, and Stevie being part of the crew because we saw she helped in the decision today. You guys came in, took on right side tires, then another caution, you took on left side tires. Earnhardt didn't. Yeah. Is that what made the difference? Well, I, I wanted to, uh, the tires I had on the start of the race were not very good. I qualified on them. I don't mean they weren't very good. They weren't as good as I said I had practiced on. So I was anxious to get those tires on the car. And in all honesty, early in the race, I, could, I saw I could outrun everybody. And I wasn't too worried. And I knew when I got fresh tires on a couple rounds of bite that Eddie and uh, Donnie and everybody would, would get me out of the pit and we'd win this race. It's just uh, a neat day, and thank Budweiser. And, of course, don't forget about Colonial Bread. Got to have that bread, eat that chicken, and drink his beer with it. <laughs> <laughs> You've been with the Grand National Series when it was a late model sportsman series, and you won so many, so many victories there at the Nashville Raceway. 
compare the class of competition now, Daryl, to, let's say, maybe when you were in it and you were the, the, the hot dog? Well, you know, a thing that uh, used to upset me so bad, uh, guys like Bobby Allison and uh, you know, even Jack Ingram and Morgan Shepard, a lot of guys used to come to Nashville where I was supposed to be the champ, and they beat me. And I used to get right upset about that. And, uh, of course, I see why now uh, they had a little more experience than I did at the time, and that's really... There's no substitute for experience in this game. Uh, being 39 years old is a blessing. It isn't a hindrance. Okay, tomorrow, can you make it too? If there was any way that I could get this, the Grand National car, the Winston Cup car, to handle like this car does, I'd lap the field. But so far, I haven't been able to do that. This is a, this car is a phenomenal record. As you know, you've done a piece on it before, and it's the car I won here with last September. This is the car that Terry Labonte won with in Charlotte. And uh, I wanted, I had to win today because last time it was running Terry won, and I wanted to be sure I was still up as good as he was anyway. <laughs> but we'll see if he can win tomorrow. And tell you what, guys, I'm going to be a little late. I'm going to get that chicken and that Budweiser and everything else he offered. Back right, up to you. Save me some. <laughs> Save me some. <laughs> Our congratulations from the booth to Daryl Waltrip, who did an outstanding job here this afternoon in winning the Dixie Cup 200 Grand National Race. Well, we're going to take this break and then be back with some closing comments and some uh, a look ahead to tomorrow's Winston Cup race from Darlington. We'll be right back.